And you're listening to DIY World Improvement on WBCR. I'm your host, Katherine Carlozzi. Today's guest found a way to light a fire in the imaginations of inner city kids from Newark, New Jersey. Now, fire and urban youth are two concepts you normally don't want to bring together. But these kids don't play with fire. They learn important life lessons with it through a nonprofit glassmaking studio and program called Glassroots. Glassroots was established in 2001 by Peck Kettenring, who has taught arts management at the Newark campus of Rutgers University for more than 20 years. Pat and I met during my early years on the board of the Montclair Art Museum when she and her students helped us with audience research projects. She's currently an instructor in Rutgers School of Public Affairs and Administration. Pat, thank you for coming to the studio this morning. I'm delighted to be here. Glassroots brings together many of your professional interests, arts and urban development, nonprofit and arts management, social entrepreneurship. Talk about what gave you the idea for it and the impetus to launch it. I was teaching students in class after class at Rutgers Business School about how to create an arts organization that might change the lives of people in cities, especially children and young people. Meanwhile, I would see youngsters on sidewalks, in parks, and on front porches with too little to do. I went to a meeting in Los Angeles where I met a woman whose organization had just started a glass blowing studio for kids in Tacoma, Washington. A what? I said. Teaching children and teens how to blow glass? Yes. So I went to visit and saw Tom, a skinny 11-year-old kid, swinging a long steel rod with heated glass on the end, which quickly became a glass. So I asked the woman who started the hot shop, the fancy name for a glass blowing studio, how it started. She said, I found a place for kids who were looking for excitement and created a place to melt glass and then to blow it into bubbles which became drinking glasses, plates, and bowls. And that is it. I know that you've always been fascinated with glass, and I've always been fascinated with glass, and we've talked about our trips to Venice and some of the artists we know, like Dale Cahooley and Preston Singletary. There are a lot of forms of art you could have used, and as I've said, glass is a bit counterintuitive. I mean, 2,000-degree ovens and kids. Why fire, you're asking me? Yeah, why fire? Learning to play with fire and melted glass requires great skill, strength, and a clear idea ahead of time of what you want to make. Put that together, and first a person learns how to make a small glass bead by himself or herself over a torch, which melts the glass. Then you twirl the melted glass on a metal rod, and within three or four minutes, you've made a bead. Make five or 15 or 50 more, and you have a necklace or a bracelet. Make it on a large pipe that you blow into, and you've made a plate, a cup, or a bowl and you've become an artist. And I've seen some of the kids working, and it really is fascinating, and they do make incredible things working with the glass. The program's grown quite a bit in the last decade. Talk to us a little bit about the evolution and what the current components of the program are. Well, we started with about 100 children ages 9 to 14 from the Boys and Girls Club in 2002, and by 2009-10, we had 700 kids a year and primarily the later kids, the 12 to 18 year olds of the most recent years, have been really the ones who have learned how to bring glass together into a career path and that's what we really are interested in. At first the kids came from boys and girls clubs and other Newark schools but then we found that those students who stayed with us from the nearby schools gained the most because they were there for the longest amount of time. Today there are three separate studios, one for flame working which is bead making, one for kiln form glass such as mosaics and layered glass and glass blowing as well as our business skills training. In 2005 we raised several hundred dollars from a generous patron and turned a hundred year old brick stable into our hot shop. We also added kilns which are ovens in which to melt flat decorated glass and into tiles, bowls, and plates, and then we got a sandblaster. You can make a design on a piece of plastic, cut out what the image is to be, and blow sand just on the open parts, and you've stenciled a snowflake, a person's name, or a flower on your plate or vase. So you did mention that the kids are coming in from uh, boys and girls clubs. You know, the the kids who come through your core program, Mm -hmm. how are they chosen? Are they self-selecting? The organizations often come to us, and they select to be part of us. Um, We also have a number of students who hear about us through other young people and then come to the door and say, I've heard about Glassroots. I want to be part of this program. 
And so there's a combination of both institutions who bring the children, but as we've uh, dealt with older students in the in the very recent years, 16 to 18 year olds, many of them have come on their own through knowing other people that are involved in it. Mm-hmm. And how many in total do you think you've trained in the last 10, 11 years? My guess is it's somewhere between four or 5,000 students who have been in the program. That's remarkable. That is. is remarkable. I visited the studio, and I didn't realize it had been a stable. On one of the hottest days of what was a very hot summer, it was 109 in Newark that day. And let me tell you, the furnace room was 106, so there was no escape. But as you'll hear in the uh, interview that follows, the studio is in a very busy urban setting. I'm here with Jason Manami and Javon Valentine, who have been involved in the program for quite a while. And I'd like to add that Javon is a sophomore at Bloomfield College. Javon, talk about how you came to Glassroots. Well, basically it was a regular school day, and uh, my friend Devin, he invited me down, and he kept talking about it several days before. And, you know, I kept questioning, oh, what is Glassroots? What is Glassroots? Got down here, and I saw exactly what they did. They were making beads, they were making coasters, they were making everything you can think of. I was interested because that's something I've never really done before. So I decided to join up. Did a couple of beads. And after I did those couple of beads, I just got really hooked on. I just yeah. wanted to do everything. I wanted to go into the hot shot with Jason and just, just work everything out there. I found out that I was really good in the hot shop. I ended up making lots of bowls and cups. And then I moved on to bigger things like vases. And I actually had a vase that sold for like $200. Wow. $200. So... That was pretty good. And Jason, you started the Hot Shop program, correct? Yeah, to an extent. I, I think the, the starts of it was with Pat and the all the fundraising and trying to get everything organized. But actual building of it, uh, the physical of the, the Hot Shop, yes. How many students do you work with, you know, on average? I guess it varies depending on uh, the class. We try to have at least six students in the back at, at one time. After that, it gets a little crowded and harder to manage. What do you see in working with the kids between the time you start working with a particular student, let's say this particular student right here, <laughs> who's now your assistant? Yeah. And over what period of time did that happen? 2009, I yeah. guess, 2008. So, I mean, it was a long time, but it actually mm-hmm. wasn't that long. Uh, Javon picked it up really quickly, I think. He was very observant. He did a lot of observing in the beginning. He did didn't really want to necessarily step into the role of being an actual glass blower. He would always say, you know, I'm just watching. I want to learn through the observing what you guys are doing. Yeah. Um, but once he actually stepped into the position of a glass blower, I think he got very excited. His drive led him to pick up every skill and perfect it. And next thing you know, he was doing things that I don't know if he thought he would be doing, but pretty impressive. Like he talked about the vase that he made. It was a substantial three-gathered vase with uh, intricate color techniques. So I think the idea behind the hot shop is it's also very challenging, and I, I think Javon would attest to that. So a lot of the students come in, and, and it can be frustrating at times, but I think that that challenge to it is actually what keeps them going, but also gives them that, I want to say, that perseverance, perseverance mm-hmm. to push through and try it again or Let's try to do three of them this time. And I think that follows through in maybe life skills also. I was going to ask, does that carry through to other parts of your life, do you think? I would say yes, because when I got back there, I wasn't really as social Mm -hmm. as I was till now. Mm -hmm. Because back there, you know, I didn't really, you know, want to talk to most people. But then when I started doing things, I started getting real excited. And when I got really excited, I started talking to everybody. I, uh-huh. I made new friends down here. And that's that's what you know really makes me happy about this place, because you can make new friends and you can learn a new skill at the same time. So that, that's why I really love this place. Have you brought any of your friends to the program? I try to get people down here, you know, to see, see what I do you know, from time to time. How do you see this playing out in the future? What impact has being involved with Glassroots had on your plans for what you're going to do. I'm studying to be a police officer. So from there, you know, that, that job involves a lot of talking, a lot of communication. And from here, I've learned a lot of communication, as well as some business aspects. And so from there, I'll be able to use the skills that I've learned here into my future career. And that's, you know, I really like to thank them for that. They really helped me develop some of my skills. 
that's really going to help. But what about the glass? I mean, you obviously love it. So is that going to stay a hobby? It's, it's going to stay a hobby. It's mm-hmm. going to stay a hobby. I, I told Jason several times that I'm not going to stop doing this. I love it way too much to give up. When I start something, I never give up. So I'm eventually going to, when I have the time, make my way down here or anywhere else I can blow glass and keep refreshing my skills and keep going. Pat, after we finished that interview, you pointed out a few other things about Javon's experiences at Glassroots that are going to help him be a good cop. He's an extraordinary young man, as you can hear. The interesting thing that he just mentioned was the business skills training that we provide as well, and I believe that that puts him in a place that, should he ever want to, he could actually start his own business. Um, He knows how to advertise what he makes. He knows how to sell himself as a person, which he did not know, frankly, when he came in the door. Once he finished high school and started college, we see him becoming more and more a role model for those other young people uh, who are in our, our program. And I think the most exciting thing that is that as one day a policeman, he will really and truly be able to make the city that he lives in a better place. You also mentioned something that I thought was interesting. You talked about how his process of overcoming his fear of working with the fire and the hot glass will help him in working, especially with kids who are in trouble and understanding their attraction, repulsion to things that have to do with danger. Exactly. Well, he lives in a difficult situation in his neighborhood, and he's aware of those dangers and he has realized them, and I believe that that's a very important skill for his future. While I was at the studio that day, I also interviewed two of the young women who've completed the program. Maya Curry and Yasmin Graham are part of the Glassroots program. Maya, after you graduated from high school, you came to work here on a part-time basis, did yeah. you not? So you must really like it here. I do. No, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a cool job to have. It's, it's never boring. So like, I've never had a boring job before, so when Pat offered me the job, I was like, yes. And Yasmin? I'm doing the same thing. So my dad in high school. How did you both originally come to Glassroots, and when? Um, I came through my high school. My art teacher actually told me about it, that they had like an art studio down here. So I was going to intern in the summer, and I ended up actually getting paid for it because I worked through the city. So I came summer before my senior year. Oh, eight was my first summer. And I interned, and then during the school year, during my senior year, I did the core after-school program. What is your focus? I ended up having my focus as glass blowing. I started off in flame working, and then I ended up in glass blowing. Yeah, I had a lot of pieces from everywhere. And Yasmin, how did you come here? My first time finding out about glass shoes was eighth grade. We had a, like a bee baking class with extra course, and then junior senior year, when my friend was telling me about how they come here at the school, and uh-huh. I was like, okay, I'll go with you just to see what it is. And it wasn't until I actually got to the studio that I realized where it was and I was like I've been here before and then I started volunteering just like my end I went to the nifty program which is a core group and learn how to do your own business and I focused in kiln forming and glass blowing but right now I'm just working with kiln forming. How has being involved with glass roots affected what you want to do in the future? What, what impact has it had on your lives? It gave me a different way to look at things, so everything doesn't have to be... Cause I, so originally everything was drawing or painting or something of that sort. Mm-hmm. I didn't really get into the sculpting field, so coming here gave me a different way of doing things in 3D mm-hmm. rather than being 2D and just seeing it on a flat surface. So being able to go for something that I sketched out and then create it and make it so that I can see it and feel it and have a texture of it or anything like that. And dealing with architecture, because I want to go into that field, it'll probably help me in the long run. I would think so. Plus you said you, know, you also went through the business program. Yeah. And I would think that that's going to help a lot as well. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> From glass making and, and art to architecture is, I can see a direct line there. Broadcasting is a little different. How do you think being involved here, and not yeah. just in the glass work, but just working here and being involved in the whole program, how has that affected what you're planning to do? I wasn't always a broadcasting major. I started off as an anthropology major. So when I was here originally, we learned a lot about art, and I like to look at art from of different cultures. Mm-hmm. So when I was an anthropology major, that was one thing that kind of interested me. So when I would be here, like we have a library over there, so I would like look through the different books of Native American art or African art or art from different cultures. And as a broadcasting major, one thing I want to eventually do is do work for companies and do documentaries and programs about kind of like what you're doing that make a positive impact on the community and about art. So being here has helped me be around a lot of different things. I've met a lot of different people, so it's kind of showed me how everything kind of all is not coming out right. (laughs) 
<laughs> you were talking about the impact of art on a community. What do you think, especially having been involved in this, what is the impact of art on a community? I think just with Glass Truth, out of the people that have been here, me and Yazzie and then Javon and a couple of our other friends that have been here, we've been here since high school and we've all gone on to college. A lot of the kids that were in the program last year are academic interns and the core kids they're finishing high school, they're eventually going off to college. So I think out of the kids that have been here has had a very positive influence. I think that more people should know about it and more kids will be positively impacted. And even if they don't maybe go to college, at least they're doing something productive. And possibly come out with... The skill, yeah. Yeah. Because I happened to another, one of our interns, he's, he's going to be working at Corning now. And I mean, he's not going to college, but he has a skill now. He's an artisan, so... That's wonderful. And you were introduced by friends. Have you introduced yeah. friends? Yeah. Here? <laughs> yeah. You have. And have they stayed? Davon, he's one of our friends, and he graduated, and he's in college now. A couple of our other friends. The people that we came in with, we're all in college now. Anything else you want to say about the program? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really fun. I wish Everybody I could do it again. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a lot of fun. Maya's studying at Montclair State, and Yazzie's at Essex County College. Yazzie does some wonderful mosaic work, and the two of them became my docents while I was at Glassroots and made sure I saw absolutely everything from the bead making to Jason and Javon and back in the furnace room working that day. And it was just absolutely fascinating. Well, what's so exciting um, is that, oddly enough, mastering glass making and specifically glass blowing has showed each of them how to handle all sorts of tough, dangerous situations in a safe way. It gives each of them self-confidence and self-knowledge, knowing what they can accomplish alone and as a team member. And, of course, that teamwork is key. You can really see that, the way they interacted, the way Jason and Javon interacted. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I alluded to when we, I was talking to uh, Maya and Yazzie is that Newark has quite a vibrant arts community. Where does Glassroots fit in with that? Well, I think Glassroots is one of many local arts agencies which make Newark the very heart of arts and education, uh, both in New Jersey. Thinking of it as the dancers, musicians, painters, and sculptors all come to Newark to learn and then to share their talents. It makes Newark the most vibrant art center in the state. I know that um, I attended your gala last month, and I brought home some really beautiful pieces from Glassroots. But where else do you get your funding? None of this art making would happen without many people, companies, and foundations giving the funding that allows more youth to come to this studio and other arts agencies. Meantime, many visitors come to Glassroots to find the perfect gift for a friend or relative or to take lessons in flame working or glass blowing. These sales help the studio serve more youth each year. And by the way, to our listeners, you can go to Glassroots. Um, there are times when the public can go and, and you can put Absolutely. together a party. You can do birthday parties and things like that and make beads, and it would be a lot of fun. I know that Glassroots was not a Rutgers initiative per se, but I also know you've gotten your students involved. And having worked with some of those students over the years, I can see what a great opportunity it would be. Talk about how they have been involved. Well, Rutgers business students designed our first business plan and marketing plan many years ago, and several Rutgers alums have been on our board of trustees. Especially exciting has been a number of business students who've come each year to help the most advanced students prepare for the business plan competition, which we hold each year. And each of those young people is helped create a business model that's on the web, and they can therefore show what it is that they do best and how that would help them in their future. All of these are really important ties, I feel, between the student population at Rutgers University and younger students who look like them, and that is really key. Today we also have a group from the public affairs students who are helping to renovate the Glassroots website and to help the program grow through internet exposure. I think that any time you can open a window onto the world of higher education for students, demystify it, make it seem exactly. real and attainable is a very important element of any kind of after-school program, whatever the platform may be. Um, during the decade that you served as executive director of Glassroots, and I know you retired last year from that, you continued your teaching career at Rutgers. When you made that transition, I've talked to so many nonprofit organizations and especially 
especially startups where the dream is to get to a point where you can be the professional executive director and quit the day job. You <laughs> kept your day job. But I also know from talking to so many people who have started a DIY world improvement project that the hard thing is to let go of the baby and transition to someone else taking uh, the position of leadership. How difficult was that for you? Well, I certainly could not walk away from Glassroots ever, I'll be honest with you. But I also realized that I had really been able to do what I set about to do at the beginning, which was to create a unique opportunity for underserved kids within the city to make something very special out of their own time with some really committed educators. I think there are too few times that many of these young people were able to work with one individual who could really set a goal for them and help them achieve their own goals. Um, and I, f I feel that that was really what I had in mind when I started this. I used glass making because I knew that it was dangerous and that it caused students to take a step towards what would be safe for them to do and at the same time that they could look for creativity in a dangerous art form which would allow them to let ideas come out of their heads, out of their own experience. And in some ways, I think that mirrors urban life for many of these mm -hmm. students. And I think that through that testing in the actual curriculum, that they each gain something very, very important personally. And I think then the outstanding staff that we have, the artistic staff, has helped each one of these young people, just as some of your interviews have shown, to become something much more than wh who they were when they entered. Yeah, it's clear that the, the challenge and that making yourself take that next step, That's you know, correct. something that you think that maybe you wouldn't do, but then you do do it. That's correct. And I think part of it, and I, I've observed it there and, and elsewhere too, is just having someone who says, I believe in you. I believe that you can do this. Absolutely. I think makes all the difference in the world. So turning that over to someone else who has that same passion for youth and knowledge of running an organization like um, Wesley Sims, who has taken the program over, I feel was the right time and the right thing for me to do and for the organization to do. Well, and it's always going to be your baby, and it's gr grown up and gone into the world, but, uh, and clearly, you know, you will stay involved. What is the most important thing you personally have gotten out of this whole endeavor, and where, now that it's grown up, where do you want to see it go? Well, I would like to see it if it, at some later point, had the opportunity to build a larger hot shop where more students could study. I also think that we have a possibility in Newark right now that's extremely interesting with a new superintendent of schools who is an artist in her own right, who may be able to open more doors for groups such as Glassroots to work with public students in the public school system right now. That has been a major challenge, and I would love to see more cooperation between individual organizations such as Glassroots with specific schools in the city district. Uh, many years ago, we had a very short uh, time that we worked with one of the middle schools, and I found that then those students who had been with us in the spring turned up on their own in the summer because mm -hmm. they wanted to come back and learn more. I think even if we could just get a taste into certain of those schools, that there would be young people that then would be attracted and would want to spend a summer with us. That would be positive, for sure. I'm going to ask you a question that I asked uh, the students. How has Glassroots changed your life? Oh, my goodness. It's made me feel that with good people who are really, truly committed to social change, each of us has that capability, but we have to come together with very, very clear goals in mind and then go after them very, very rigorously to be able to make it work the way it is. It's a very tough environment, and I'll be honest with you, the last three years um, in the different uh, economic issues that we've had to deal with have made it extremely hard. You have to do much more with a great deal less mm -hmm. in terms of uh, money in particular and therefore staffing, etc. But I think one of the amazing things is that that key 
uh, team of artists there have just, be- you know, bound themselves together and decided that they will do whatever it takes to make this program work. And watching them work with the young people has been, you know, very interesting because their commitment is so, so evident. Well, it's also interesting that there are many uh, opportunities for physical uh, activities in the arts through drama and dance, etc., elsewhere in Newark. But there's nothing else in the visual arts that's quite as physical as this. And I think that's a key reason why it's very, very popular with a number of these people who come into our studio not knowing what to expect. Not only is it a physical kind of activity, but it brings great satisfaction when you can come out with a beautiful item at the end. And they are beautiful items. (laughs) Pat, thank you very much for being here today. Um, How can people find out more about Glassroots? Well, there's a website that's called Glassroots, Inc., and we would be happy to have you come and look at that on the web. Even more happy to have you come to 10 Bleecker Street, which is right off uh, Washington Street in downtown Newark, about two blocks from the Newark Museum. We're around there day after day, weekends as well, and would love to see everyone who would like to come and learn about how exciting is the power of glass and fire. You will also find a link to Glassroots on the DIY World Improvement Facebook page where you are always welcome to like us. brick stable into our hot shop. We also added kilns, which are ovens in which to melt flat decorated glass and into tiles, bowls, and plates. And then we got a sandblaster. You can make a design on a piece of plastic, cut out what the image is to be, and blow sand just on the open parts, and you've stenciled a snowflake, a person's name, or a flower on your plate or vase. So you did mention that the kids are coming in from uh, Boys and Girls Clubs. You know, the the kids who come through your core program, Mm -hmm. how are they chosen? Are they self-selecting? The organizations often come to us, and they select to be part of us. Um, We also have a number of students who hear about us through other young people and then come to the door and say, I've heard about Glassroots. I want to be part of this program. And so there's a combination of both institutions who bring the children, but as we've uh, dealt with older students in the in the very recent years, 16 to 18 year olds, many of them have come on their the idea for it and the impetus to launch it. I was teaching students in class after class at Rutgers Business School about how to create an arts organization that might change the lives of people in cities, especially children and young people. Meanwhile, I would see youngsters on sidewalks, in parks, and on front porches with too little to do. I went to a meeting in Los Angeles where I met a woman whose organization had just started a glass-blowing studio for kids in Tacoma, Washington. A what, I said? Teaching children and teens how to blow glass? Yes. So I went to visit and saw Tom, a skinny 11-year-old kid, swinging a long steel rod with heated glass on the end, which quickly became a glass. So I asked the woman who started the hot shop, the fancy name for a glass blowing studio, how it started. She said, I found a place for kids who were looking for excitement and created a place to melt glass and then to blow it into bubbles which became drinking glasses, plates, and bowls. And that is it. I know that you've always been fascinated with glass and I've always been fascinated with glass and we've talked about our trips to Venice and some of the artists we know like Dale Cahooley and Preston Singletary. There are a lot of forms of art you could have used and as I've said glass is a bit counterintuitive. I mean 2,000 degree ovens and kids. Why fire? You're asking me. Yeah, why fire? Learning to play with fire and melted glass requires great skill, strength, and a clear idea ahead of time of what you want to make. Put that together, and first a person learns how to make a small glass bead by himself or herself over a torch, 
which melts the glass. Then you twirl the melted glass on a metal rod, and within three or four minutes, you've made a bead. Make five or 15 or 50 more, and you have a necklace or a bracelet. Make it on a large pipe that you blow into, and you've made a plate, a cup, or a bowl. And you've become an artist. And I've seen some of the kids working, and it really is fascinating. And they do make incredible things working with the glass. The program's grown quite a bit in the last decade. You're listening to DIY World Improvement on WBCR. I'm your host, Catherine Carlozzi. Today's guest found a way to light a fire in the imaginations of inner city kids from Newark, New Jersey. Now, fire and urban youth are two concepts you normally don't want to bring together. But these kids don't play with fire. They learn important life lessons with it through a nonprofit glassmaking studio and program called Glassroots. Glassroots was established in 2001 by Peck Kettenring, who has taught arts management at the Newark campus of Rutgers University for more than 20 years. Pat and I met during my early years on the board of the Montclair Art Museum when she and her students helped us with audience research projects. She's currently an instructor in Rutgers School of Public Affairs and Administration. Pat, thank you for coming to the studio this morning. I'm delighted to be here. Glassroots brings together many of your professional interests, arts and urban development, nonprofit and arts management, social entrepreneurship. Talk about what gave you. Talk to us a little bit about the evolution and what the current components of the program are. Well, we started with about 100 children ages 9 to 14 from the Boys and Girls Club in 2002, and by 2009-10, we had 700 kids a year, and primarily the later kids, the 12 to 18-year-olds of the most recent years, have been really the ones who have learned how to bring glass together into a career path, and that's what we really are interested in. At first, the kids came from Boys and Girls Clubs, and other Newark schools, but then we found that those students who stayed with us from the nearby schools gained the most because they were there for the longest amount of time. Today there are three separate studios, one for flame working, which is bead making, one for kiln form glass, such as mosaics and layered glass, and glass blowing, as well as our business skills training. In 2005, we raised several hundred dollars from a generous patron and turned a hundred-year-old 